Hello guys! Ngayong araw na to, ituturo ko sa inyo ang different properties of paralagam. Hi guys! Today, we are going to talk about the different properties of paralelogram. Okay, when we say paralelogram, as you are going to take a look at our figure, so these opposite sides are parallel, okay? And this side is parallel to this side. So that's why they are called parallelogram. So there are two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel, okay? So aside from uh, parallelism of the opposite sides, we can also state that any two opposite sides are congruent. So AB is opposite to CD, so therefore they are congruent. Then AD is opposite to BC, so therefore they are congruent. So let us apply uh, property number 1 in solving a problem. So in parallelogram PQRS, so if we're going to write uh, PQRS, so you should write it in a sequence. So you can start P on this part, then Q, then R, and S. Or maybe you can start a P here, then Q, then R, and okay, S. Kinakalangan dito ay magkakasunod. Okay? The length of PQ is equal to 12 cm and the length of QR equals 8 cm. So there's a ty typographical error of the word length. So find the perimeter of the parallelogram PQ RS, okay? So one way to determine the perimeter of parallelogram PQRS is to determine the remaining lengths of the other sides. Okay? So pwede natin gamitin yung property number 1 para mahanap natin. So sabi natin dito si PQ is 12 cm. Nasaan ba yung co-opposite niya si SR? So ano ba sila? Equal ba? Yes. So they are equal to SR is also equal to Okay, so 12 cm. Then, as si QR naman ay 8 cm, ka-opposite naman ni PS. So, ano ngayon ang length ni PS? So, ganun din, maging 8 cm. So, since uh, nakuha na natin ang lahat ng sides ng PQRS, pwede na natin i-add. So, pag in-add natin lahat, so meron kang perimeter equals 12 plus 12 plus 8 plus 8. So, syempre, pinakamadali dito, pwede mong i-add yung 12 plus 8 magiging 20, 12 plus 8 is 20, then 20 plus 20 magiging equal kay 40 cm. Pero may simple technique na kung saan hindi mo na kinakalangang hanapin yung remaining side kasi meron ka ng given na consecutive. Pag given yung consecutive side, so just simply add the two consecutive sides, 12 and 8, which is 20, then multiply it by 2 kasi pareho lang yan. So, ibig sabihin, eto ay pareho lang dito. Kaya, 2 times 12 plus 8. So, 2 times 20 is also equal to 40 cm. Na hindi natin kinakalang hanapin yung remaining uh, lens ng other side. Okay? So, next. For example, number 2, then uh, ganun pa rin. Uh, PQRS pa rin tayo, pero ang length ng PQ natin 4x. Okay? Meron na tayo ditong x. Okay? Tapos yung uh, RS naman natin ay 3x plus Okay, 3x plus 5 cm. So, kung titignan natin yung figure, these two lengths are opposite. So, ibig sabihin, sila ay equal or congruent. Okay? So, kaya i-equate mo lamang yung 4x and 3x plus 5. Pag sinolve natin yung ganito, pwede tayong gumamit ng transposition method. Pwede natin ilipat dito, di ba? Nagagamit tayo ng subtraction. Pero, pwede rin naman natin gamitin yung addition property of equality or subtraction property of equality na kadalasan ito yung ginagamit okay so pero yung transposition ay isa sa pinaka uh, technique na mas madaling tindihan ng mga bata okay so nako sa pag nag naglipat ka okay dito sa equal sign babaguhin mo yung sign kaya magiging 4x minus 3x so kaya maging x na lang to then ang ang right side natin is equal to 5 so therefore ang x natin ay 5. So, pwede na natin ngayong hanapin si RS by simply substituting x by by 5. Kaya, ang RS natin dito ay 3 times 5 which is 15 added by 5. So, makukuha lamang natin ay 20. So, pag hinanap mo si PQ, same lang niya, magiging 20. Kung gusto mo, ay substitute natin yung uh, 5 sa x, 4 times uh, 5. Magiging equal pa rin yung kay 20. Pero, hindi na kasi, hindi na kailangan pang i-substitute dahil si RS is, is already equal to PQ. So, PQ is also equal to 20. Ganun lang kasimple. So, number 2. 
in a parallelogram, any two opposite angles are congruent. Sabi nila, congruent tau. So, eto ngayon ay opposite, kaya magiging congruent. Okay? So, tapos, uh, eto naman si angle B naman na to, ay congruent naman kay angle D. Okay? So, yun naman ang kanyang opposite. So, eto yun na yung natin opposite. Okay? So, apply natin yung uh, property na yan in solving this problem. So, yung angle X natin dito is 120. Nasaan yun? Eto yun. Okay? Obtuse angle. Tapos, ang hinahanap natin dito is si angle Z. Eto naman yun. So, makita natin ko opposite yan. Kaya, simply, angle Z is equal to 120. Sa so, tanong doon, kaya ba natin hanapin si angle Y o kaya si angle W? Yes. Pwede natin mahanap yan gamit yung property number 3. So, mamaya na lang ha. Later para... Um, bibigyan ko sa iyo kasi meron pa akong isang example ng prop using property number 2. Okay? Okay, so example number 4, in parallelogram x y z w, measure of angle w is 3x minus 5. Okay? So nasaan 'yon? Ito 'yon. So ilagay natin dito si 3x minus 5, okay? Tapos uh, mamaya natin ilagay yung uh, degrees ha. So si angle y naman natin, ito 'yan. So 2x plus 15, okay? 2x plus okay, 15. So, makita natin, opposite yung dalawa. Kung opposite yung dalawa, ibig sabihin, equal yon Kaya, equate mo lang yung dalawa. So, eto, pinakamadali dito, syempre, yung transposition. Pero, sabi nga sa inyo, pwedeng gumamit ng addition property of equality or subtraction property of equality. So, naku saan pwede tayo mag-subtract ng 2x and mag-add naman ng uh, 5 on both sides. Kaya, magiging 3x minus 2x, dito naman magiging 15 plus 5. So, pag minus natin to magiging x, and 15 plus 5, makukha lamang natin ang 20. So, since nakuha mo na yung uh, 20, pwede mo na ngayon i-substitute yung 20 kay x para mahanap natin si w. Ito lang yan, di ba? Ibig sabihin, times lang yon. So, kaya magiging um, 3 times uh, 20, 60 minus ng 5, makukha natin yung 55. Okay? Kung gusto mong hanapin si y, same lang din yan, 55. Pero kung gusto mong i-substitute yung 20, same lang din yon. So, papakita natin. Okay, para makita natin, ha? so, limbawa, 2 times 20, magiging 40, tama? Okay, pag in natin ng, 5, uh, ng 15, so, same, magiging equal yan kay 55. Pero, bakit ko pa mag magsasubstitute? Eh, alam mo naman na equal yan. So, nakuha mo na to. So, syempre, ang angle Y is equal. Pero, ano yung kahalagahan nun? Pwede, kasi, baka mali dito, ano? So, for uh, checking purposes, so, makikita natin kung totoo nga ba talagang uh, equal yan dalawa. Okay, kaya pwede rin isubstitute, okay? Pero kung sigurado, sigurado kayo 55, no? Hindi nang i-substitute, okay? So, dito na papasok yung sinasabi ko sa inyo na kahit isang angle lang yung given natin, pwede natin mahanap yung lahat ng angles na yun. Because in a parallelogram, any two consecutive angles are congruent. Pag sanabi natin consecutive, si angle A is consecutive to angle B. Kaya, they are supplementary. Siyempre, if they are supplementary, the sum is equal to 100 80. Okay? So, si angle A is also uh, uh, consecutive to angle D. Kaya, si angle A plus angle D is also equal to 180 degrees. So, si angle D is consecutive to angle C. So, they are supplementary. Then, their measures, the sum of their measures is also equal to 180. And lastly, si angle B at angle C ay consecutive then. Kaya, supplementary. So, therefore, measure of angle C plus measure of angle B equals 180 degrees. Okay? So, tingnan natin yan. Gamitin natin yan kay example number 5. Ang given lamang natin dito, si angle D as 50 degrees. So, sabi nga sa inyo kanina, kaya na natin hanapin lahat. Okay? Gamit si property number 3. Pero, mas madaling i-combine natin si property number 2. Okay? So, pag hinahanap natin si angle uh, A, syempre, A and D are uh, supplementary are consecutive so therefore they are supplementary or the sum is equal to 180 then by substitution method angle D ay papalitan natin ng 50 then by subtraction so magiging 180 minus of 50 kaya si angle A is 130 degrees pero syempre hindi na natin kinakalang gamitan pa ng uh, property number 3 para mahanap yung other uh, angle so nahanap mo na si angle A Si angle A ay 130. Kinakalapa ba natin ng hanapin, ah, gamitin ang property number 3 para mahanap sa angle B? No, need na. O, same, ka-similar, ay ka-opposite ni angle D. Kaya, syempre, si angle uh, C 
is also equal si angle C eto ka opposite ni angle A same lang yan kay 130 at si angle B ka opposite ni angle uh, D so same lang din yan kay 50 so hindi na natin kinakalang gamitin pa ng lahat ng property number T so i-apply mo na agad yung property number 2 para mas madaling mahanap yung remaining angles okay pagdating naman kay number uh, 6 meron ka ng 3x plus 14 So, eto ngayon si angle A na magiging 3x plus 14. Okay, so, so mamaya natin ilagay yung, uh, yung degrees. Okay, so tapos si angle B naman natin dito ay x plus 6. Ayan, so makikita natin, consecutive yung ang angle A and angle B. Kaya, they are supplementary. Then their sum is equal to 180. So, i-add mo lang yung dalawa. So, dito, combine the similar term. So, pag in natin 3x plus uh, x, magiging 4x. Pag in natin ang 14 and 6, makukuha naman natin yung 20. So, by subtraction, so, subtract natin yung 20 from 180. So, mahanap natin ang 160. Then, by division, so, divide both sides by uh, 4. Okay, so, 160 divided by 4, mahanap naman natin ang 40. So, since nakuha na natin yung 40 kay x, pwede na natin hanapin ang lahat ng angles. Kahit alin dyan, pwede mong Uh, kahit uh, alin kay angle A at angle B pwede natin kuhanin directly kasi meron na tayong x equal to 40 so by substitution method lang tayo so alam ba kung gusto kong unahin sa angle A so meron akong uh, 3x plus 14 so magiging 3 times 14 is 120 plus 14 mawawa ko lang yung 134 degrees so syempre si angle C naka opposite ng angle A same lang yan kay 134 So, si angle uh, B and si angle D, pwede natin makuha yan in terms of yung um, consecutive, di ba, na magiging supplementary. Okay? Pero, mas madali kung i-substitute na lamang natin dito. So, ganun lang yung mga paraan, ano? So, minsan, uh, mas madali mag-substitute, minsan mahiram. Okay? So, ganun lang yung gagawin natin. So, samantalang, by substitution, palitan mo ito ng uh, 40, mag-add ka ng 6. So, mga hanap mo agad ng 40, 60 degrees. Pero, pwede mo namang isubrak si Uh, 134 kay 118 na kung saan pag may minus mo yung uh, 180 minus 134 still mahanap mo pa rin naman si 46 so same lang din naman yan diba? kaya si angle D is also equal to uh, 46 degrees okay? so let us proceed with property number 4 the diagonals of parallelogram bisect each other okay? pag sinabi natin bisect ibig sabihin hinahati niya yung isa sa into two congruent parts so meaning si point A ngayon ay lumalabas na midpoint of the diagonals kaya si AE ay congruent ngayon kay CE kung si AE ay congruent kay CE at si, si point A is midpoint pwede natin sabihin that AE equals CE na one half of AC o pwede natin i twice ngayon si AE o kaya si CE si AE na lang ilalagay ko ha okay so na magiging equal ngayon kay AC pwede ganun na So, derivation of um, the formula. Next, uh, ganun din si BE, congruent naman ngayon kay DE. At ganun din si BE equals kay DE equals 1 half of BD. Or it twice natin si BE, magiging equal yan kay, okay, so, kay BD. So, pwede natin gamitin yon para mas madali natin mahanap yung ibang, um, halimbawa, ang hinahanap natin dito ay uh, BD, di ba? So, mga ganun. Instead, mag-divide ka, ID mag-multiply ka na lang sa isa kung given naman yung uh, BE. Okay? Para mas madaling mahanap si BT. Okay? So, gamitin natin yan in example number uh, 7. So, si AS ay 16. Nasaan yun? Ito yun. ba? Diba? Ito si AS. Tapos, si MR naman natin ay 11. Ito naman si MR. ba? Diba? Ayun. So, hinahanap natin dito yung length ni M or MT, length ni RT, ni AT at ni ST. So, si AT equal kay ST. Okay? Pwede natin gamitin yon or si AT or si ST is kalahati ni AS, okay? O kaya naman, pwede namang uh, i-divide by 2 si AS na kung saan 16 divided by 2 equals 8 because 1 half of 16 is also equal to 8 cm. So, nahanap na si AT, so si ST, 8 cm din. So, si RMT at si RT naman ay equal which is kalahati ni MR. Okay, so divide yung uh, 11 by 2 ang mawuka natin is 5.5 or 5 and 1 half centimeter ganun din ang mahanap natin kay RT so pwede mong gamitin ay 5 and 1 half okay centimeter okay so pwede rin yun so ganun na kadali yung example number 7 so dito uh, sabihin natin may konting challenge konti lang kung sa si AS ay 5x minus 5 at si AT ay 2x plus 1 centimeter 
So, pag nirelate natin si AT at si AS, si AT ay kalahati ni AS or si, uh, A, A, si AS ay twice na AT. So, ganun yung uh, comparison. Kaya, mas madaling gamitin yung pangalawang na kung saan itatimes natin ng 2 yung AT instead na magdi-divide tayo ng 2 sa AS. Kaya, magiging 2 times uh, 2x plus 1 kasi yung yung uh, AT natin ay 2x plus 1 so by distributive property multiply natin dito yan so mahanap lamang natin ng 4x plus 2 equal kay 5x minus 5 so dito pwede na natin gamitan ng uh, subtraction or APE o kaya naman transposition so ang tanong sa inyo dito saan kayo madalas na mag-solve ng uh, variable lalo ng x diba sa left side ba o sa right side kay Sir Mark walang problema kung saan pa Uh, kung saan mo gusto mag-solve ng x and y mapakaliwa, mapakanan basta importante, huwag kang mga ngaliwa okay? so gagawin natin dito, mas madali kasi dito mag-solve sa kanan, bakit? kasi pag sa kaliwa, magiging negative so samantalang pag sa right side natin lalagay yung variable, magiging positive yung x kasi minus ng 4x then ito namang minus 5, i-add naman natin sa may left side, magiging 2 plus 5 na magiging 7 is equal to x or by Uh, symmetric property, pwede pagbalik na rin yan ang x natin ay equal kay 7 so since meron ka ng 7 kay x pwede na natin ngayon mahanap si 80 so substitution lang naman tayo dito kaya magiging 2 times 7 is 14 added by 1 mahanap natin si uh, kay 15 uh, centimeter okay? so pag hinanap natin si AST, ganun din yan so equal lang kay 80 so si AS naman, pwede naman natin gamitin yung 5x minus 5 Okay, so nasa iyo kung uh, ano gagamitin. Di ba sabi ko sa inyo kanina, pwede may substitution or mas madaling gamitin kung it times mo lang ng 2 yung 15. Kasi doble lamang si AS ni ST o kaya ni AT. Kaya 2 times 15 equals 30 cm. Kasi pag sinabsecute mo dito, pareho lang yan. 5 times 7, uh, 35 minus 5, still magiging equal kay 30 cm. So walang pinagkaiba doon. Kaya hanap lang kayo ng paraan kung saan mas mapapadali. So, number 5, last property of parallelogram, its diagonal divides the parallelogram into two congruent triangles. Okay. So, si diagonal BD ay dinidivide niya si parallelogram into two congruent triangles, ABD. Ito yun, ABD. Congruent ngayon kay CDB. Okay. So, ganun din si uh, diagonal AC, dinidivide niya rin into two congruent triangles, ABC, eto yan na congruent ngayon kay CTA. So dito, pinakita ko na there should be a proper pairings of um, corresponding parts of the triangle. So makita mo ABC, di ba? So eto si ABC. So itong angle A na to corresponds dito yung kay, kay C, di ba? So hindi mo pwede gamitin yung ACD. Kaya mas magiging maganda kung ang gagamitin mo ay CDA para talagang um, ginagamit natin yung proper pairings of of uh, corresponding parts ng triangle. Okay? So, yun lamang ang uh, ating uh, discussion today is about the different properties of parallel government. I hope that uh, natulungan ko kayo kung paano natin pasimplihan yung uh, properties na yun. At uh, sana naman ay magkakalimutan mag-subscribe at pakihit din naman yung ating uh, notification bell para naman maging update kayo sa mga susunod nating uh, video. Okay, mag -ala. Every week ay mag ano tayo ng um, Uh, grade 9, uh, okay, grade 8, grade 7 sa so lahat yun ay pipilitin natin makapag-upload ng uh, tigitigi sa every week, okay? Tapos syempre paki-like uh, naman oh, kung gusto nyo, mas magiging maganda, paki-share diba? So para naman uh, makatulong na malaki sa ating channel, okay? So that's all for this uh, day so thank you and God bless us all Bye-bye!